I'm really honoured to be awarded an interfaith award with two other gentlemen who are very well known to me and um, so it's a great honour. Search for Common Ground does a wonderful work and has been doing so for many years so to be associated with it in this kind of way is not only an honour but also very humbling as well. We're talking to friends, whether we're Muslims, Christians or Jews, the sensible middle ground, we know one another. The problem is how do we reach out to the extremists and that is still the major trouble. Quickly around the world you can get you know, statements about Americans and in, in what they're saying about the Quran and, and, and vice versa. So I think really it's a, it's a trouble. I think the internet creates major problems for us as well as good uh, news as well. How do we overcome that? You can't beat personal relationships. So that's what Search for Common Ground is all about. Tr trying to find common ground where we meet one another as friends and we change enemies into friends. But information is very quick to gather. Intelligence and understanding is a far more difficult thing and we're all in that kind of problem today trying to understand and help one another. But the good news is we are getting somewhere. Since 9-11 I think there's greater understanding about Islam, about Judaism, about Christianity than there has been before. I can think back, I mean I was appointed Archbishop of Canterbury in 1990 and interfaith in Britain was really in the beginning of, of something. I, I took um, on the job as Archbishop of Canterbury thinking that this is going to be a minor distraction. But in fact within a few years interfaith became a major, major industry and I had to be involved. I think the hot spots include places like Sudan, Nigeria at the present moment, where there's tremendous conflict. I mean, the focus is not so much on Sudan at the moment, it had been in the past, but now Nigeria, where there, is, uh, there are clashes between Christians and, and Muslims, so we've got to pay attention to that. Pakistan, with the blasphemy laws, is an acute problem. We've got to watch the Middle East as well because the so-called Arab Spring is not really, it's still winter there to a great deal um, uh, and Syria is going to create major problems. I've been um, asked recently if I could do something about the Christian minority in, in Syria. So they are under tremendous pressure. Wherever you look there, there's gloomy news but as I said earlier there's a very positive things we can work from because we now understand one another more than we've ever did in the past, so we can build on a wonderful legacy. The second um, term of office for President Obama perhaps will give him an opportunity to focus on the Middle East. That is really the major cauldron at the moment. If we can solve the problem of Israel and make sure that Israel has a proper, proper um, nation with safe borders and so on and yet at the same time allow the, pil the Palestinians to have their own state. If we can solve that one then many of the world's problems in, in terms of interfaith dialogue will be resolved. So we hope and pray that the President will take this opportunity, this wonderful uh, backing from the United States people to do something about it. True dialogue is being confident in your own faith, but a willingness to open it up so that other people can test it, so we understand one another. Of course, you know, when I go into dialogue, I don't expect to convert a Muslim or convert a Jew, because of my respect for them is that I've got to understand them better. And they're on their own spiritual journey. It's not for me to dictate how God is going to lead them. Sometimes we retreat from one another out of fear, not out of confidence. Confident believers will be open to others and go on a journey themselves. What are the key challenges that face the next Archbishop of Canterbury? I think first of all he will have a national challenge in terms of the UK, how to give confidence to the, the Church of England and to build on the foundation of Rowan Williams, that is going to be uh, an important um, um, and but a very positive challenge. I think f further afield we have a very divided Anglican communion. 
In fact, I've been reported as saying we are no longer a communion, we're a federation of Anglican churches, and that's really gloomy news indeed. And so we're split uh, with America and Britain and Western nations with the more predominantly numerous congregations of Africa and the Third World um, split from the rest of us, and that is not good. So the challenge for the next Archbishop of Canterbury is to give leadership, to bring people back together, to get them talking to one another once again, to focus on the next Lambeth Conference, to make sure every bishop is there. To do, we have to remember that our weakness actually means our mission is weaker as well. We're not able to do as much for the very poor. And the Anglican Communion has always had a great record in serving the poor. So we've got to get back to that vision and, and help the, the development forward. So the next Archbishop of Canterbury has got a real struggle on his hands, but it's one I think that is achievable. There's something about the Anglican temperament and the Episcopal temperament is that we find it quite difficult to walk away from friendship. I, I think there is something in our theology our openness to one another that makes us uh, still uh, able to reach out for reconciliation. And so I would appeal to both sides, let's seize this opportunity of a new Archbishop of Canterbury as a moment when we can just start talking once again, find out what we can share together. The issue of homosexuality or gay relationship is a critical issue throughout the world. And so we're not alone in wrestling with this at the moment. But I hope we might have the grace and the goodness to transcend that and say, look, what we have in common is far more important than that which divides us. Let's find ways of being reconciled and walking together. And I think there is something in our tradition that gives us hope. When I was uh, Archbishop of Canterbury, um, we're talking now about Justin Welby, um, the new bishop, um, newish bishop uh, of Durham. Um, he was in a fairly junior position when I was in office. Uh, I know him for the work he's done at the uh, Coventry Centre for Reconciliation. He followed a colleague of mine, um, Andrew White, who has done a wonderful work with me in the Middle East and in Nigeria. Justin comes with um, very good credentials. I mean, he's a wise man. He's young enough to have bags of energy and to set a new course. There's a freshness about him. He's very well educated with Eton, Cambridge, a good theological college. He, I think he, he, he has many, many pluses. And we just have to wait and see. And I, I want, I've already written a little note on the basis that it, he might be the one chosen to say you're, this is the most demanding and difficult job in all the world, but you're going to test the grace of God and you're going to find that uh, he is sufficient.